together as the body of Christ, whether we are here in this sanctuary or joining online right now or later today, welcome. We welcome you to Hope United Church of Christ in Moline. I am Pastor Santina Poor, and I have the great honor and abundant blessings of serving this congregation. We are glad you are with us today at Hope UCC, where we truly live by the belief that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are truly welcome here. We greet you this morning and in a time of growing unease um, surrounding COVID, our office has, we've gone full remote uh, during the week for our operations here. We are still coming together in a very skeleton crew to um, bring the live stream worship to us until there's other instructions such as a stay home order. That's what we'll keep doing in order to keep everybody safe and remain faithful in our vow to care for others. Um, along those same lines, you know, as soon as we get announcements written and published, 
we suddenly change. We have to change the announcements. So uh, although you got in the weekly update an announcement about our Quad Cities Posada with our Quad Cities Partnership Churches, we are going to postpone that one year. So 2021, it's going to be a year we have a Quad Cities Partnership Churches Posada. But just again, out of an abundance of caution and to keep everybody safe and abiding by these um, these advisories that really do are offered with the intention of keeping everybody healthy and safe. We are going to be postponing that Posada one year. But next year, man, tamales, cookies, pinatas, we're going for it. Um, youth group is meeting tonight, uh, this afternoon at three o'clock. Again, masked, distanced, and we'll figure out going forward uh, tonight how we'll be meeting virtually in order to keep everybody safe. Uh, next Saturday is a big day in the life of the United Church of Christ's Illinois Conference, the, the body to which we belong. We are installing our new conference minister, the Reverend Molly Carlson, and everyone is invited to join that celebration. It will be a video on Facebook Live, and um, I will post on Facebook the information on our church's website and on our Facebook page, uh, how you can join in and uh, be part of Molly's uh, installation into the leadership position of our conference. It's a really great day for our conference. Uh, so we move into a new week, a week that is filled with a little uncertainty, a week that is sure to bring us surprises and joy. And that's what we're talking about today is joy, how we can be super spreaders of the joy that God has given us, the, God, the joy God's love brings each one of us, the joy we know that we experience through all we feel and learn and live as the body of Christ. So as we move into worship, I invite you to just close your eyes for a minute and think about all you've seen already today, maybe the people even you encountered yesterday, the what did you see, who did you see yesterday, today? Who do you see right now? Maybe someone you're sitting next to at home or wherever you are watching this. Picture them, picture those faces you saw. Envision them as God's kingdom. Envision, see them not as the driver who cut you off, not as the teenager who didn't pick up his laundry, not as the neighbor who doesn't rake up his leaves. Picture them as the kingdom of God. moves us, God carries us, God brings us to a place where we see one another, when we see all around us in the beauty, in the light of God's love. As we move into that, as we are part of creating this kingdom of piece of God's beautiful plan. Let us celebrate and let us rejoice this great gift that God has given each of us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and come let us worship.
Please join me for the call to worship. Lift up your eyes, seeking to know your God. Attune your spirit to the one in whom we dwell. God's love surrounds us here today. God calls us to be children of light. We belong to the day when we have faith. We live confidently in the hope of salvation. We seek to be faithful to the best in the world. We want to invest our God gives us. Faithfulness gives us a sense of greater abundance. Doing justice adds to our sense of worth and dignity. Please join me as we invite God into our midst, praying together our prayer of invocation. Fill us, gracious God, <clears throat> with a sense of your abiding presence. Awaken. <clears throat> For security and help us to live with trust in you. Expand among us such mutual regard and encouragement as will build up community and lead all of us to live in the light. May faith and love dominate all our relationships as we enter into the joy of serving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God has given us so many gifts, abundant riches all around us. We enter into this kingdom, this kingdom of God, with open hearts and with the understanding that we, we must offer our confession, that we open ourselves to God's work in our lives by making us vulnerable, by acknowledging our sin. So let us take a moment first in silence to do this. Please join me in our prayer of confession. We are reluctant to face your judgment, all-knowing God. We know we have not fully invested the talents you have entrusted to us. We hide them and hoard them retreating into a false sense of security. We live in the nighttime of self-protection rather than in the light of full participation in loving, faithful service. We seek to escape your wrath by shrinking from life rather than investing ourselves in the tasks to which you call us. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We want to be children of the day, your day. Help us. Amen. God hears our prayers. God knows our deep desire to repent, to turn around, to see life in a new way, to see life through the lens God gives us as God's children. We are created in the image of God and blessed with the capacity to reflect God's will in our daily lives. God cares for each one of us and invests us all with responsibility, and thus God honors us with high expectations and confidence in our willingness to seek out life's best for all of God's creation. We are loved, we are forgiven, and our baptism is renewed. And if that doesn't give you peace, I don't know what will. But may the peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you, and please share that peace with one another. <laughs>
May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thank you. Let us pray. Wise and patient God, you have carried us so far in our journeys, and we know how you long for us to live as your people always, even when we are hesitant to do so. You have blessed us with abundant gifts and abilities to develop these gifts, the gifts you have given us, and to use them to help others know you and your love. Even when we hold back, God, you do not give up on us. You do not abandon us. We thank you for challenging us to be our very best selves. The selves, the best selves that reflect your goodness, your grace, and your justice. We pray that the gifts you have given us, the gifts of strength and hope and conviction will guide us when we are afraid, when we feel dismayed or hopeless. We pray that you will always guide us in using your gifts with joy. Holy God, one of the greatest gifts you have given us is the gift of prayer. So we come before you with our joys and the concerns that weigh on our hearts. And we pray that you will touch these lives, these beloveds who, for whom we pray with your healing love. We pray your blessings be known to Ray and Suzanne in this time of transition and grief, that you will continue to carry them forward in the love they know, your love. We pray for your healing blessings continue to be known and felt on Della, who is stronger and stronger every day. We pray that both she and Cliff will be reunited soon as Della is able to be released from her care facility and returns home. We pray, Lord, for Mackenzie and the Demarest family as they continue to navigate their relationship and that they will feel strengthened, that love is at the foundation of all they do, and that your love guides them. We pray for Pat, who is sick and also dealing with the death of her beloved son, Ricky. Bless Pat and her family, Lord, that your healing love strengthens Pat and she can recover, and that her family together is embraced and held by you as they navigate the loss of Ricky. We pray today for all those in our church community who have tested positive for COVID or are quarantined due to exposure. For them and their families, their loved ones, we pray, Lord. And we pray for families who are divided over politics and events of the day. That healing will come to them as well. We pray for the students and teachers and their families as they prepare to go fully remote through the new year, locally and throughout our country. The stress and the scheduling and the learning adaptations and disappointment and just the general 
upheaval that all this causes for lives, their lives, we pray, Lord. God, we pray for the over 243,000 souls who have been lost to COVID and their families. We pray that we never forget these lives and the value and dignity and the impact each one of these lives and the loss of this life, these lives have had throughout their communities. We pray, Lord, that you will flood our lives with hope and peace, that you will help us to trust in your abiding presence and love for all of creation as we lift our prayers to you now. We learned to trust you. We learned of the assurance of your abiding love for creation from the one you sent, your son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray the prayer we offer you together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The reading from the Hebrew scripture is Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past or like a watch in the light. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. The reading from the New Testament is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to <clears throat> have anything <clears throat> written to you. For you yourself, <coughs> excuse me, for you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. 
For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The next reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For it, is, for it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your masters. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received <clears throat> the one talent also came forward saying, master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his masters replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For all those who have, more will be given, and they, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even, when, what, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here is the reading for today. I'm seeing a lot of Christmas decorations up and out uh, around town, in our neighborhoods, in my sister-in-law's home already. Have you noticed it? Not just in the stores, but in people's yards, like I said, or in their houses as you drive by or go in. And I'm actually glad to see the decorations up this early, which surprises me because I am the keeper of the no Christmas music until after Thanksgiving rule, which that's a, that's a hard and fast rule with me. And it usually applies to decorations as well. But of course, just like everything else, this year is different. The early decorations and the music are bringing some much needed joy into our lives right now as we're facing more time inside, social distancing and not being able to be with family over Thanksgiving and even possibly the Christmas holidays. 
But all that Christmas joy, you know, you start seeing those decorations, you start hearing the music, that joy, ah, it also brings the stress of the season as well. Um, that stress of finding the perfect present for somebody. Because our consumer culture, I mean, we just can't help it, right? It forces us to follow their calendar that keeps the countdown of how many shopping days are left until Christmas. And that kind of countdown does take a little of the joy away when we have to rush through each day in this consumer-created panic. You know, the joy of remembering what the holiday is all about and caring for each other and sharing the love that came to us in the birth of Jesus, you know, that kind of gets pushed aside a little in that chaos. But this year we can stay focused on the joy, right? Because we've seen all too clearly this year what a gift life is and how quickly things can change in such unexpected ways. God has given us so much abundance, so much to appreciate and celebrate in creation. All these things that reflect God's goodness and God's grace. And we're reminded that God's gifts are meant to be shared. And by sharing, we're able to spread that joy and build this, this kingdom that is the kingdom of God. In the gospel reading we heard today, Jesus tells a parable known as the parable of the talents. Now, a talent is a unit of money in the ancient world, and it, it was a huge amount of money. It was uh, estimates say that one talent is equal to 20 years' wages for a common person. So it's, it's almost humorous that Jesus would use such a crazy exaggerated amount of money in this teaching parable. But he does because he's continuing to impart a critical lesson to his disciples at this important moment in his ministry. Because in Matthew's gospel, this story comes in just the last few days of Jesus's earthly life. He's left Galilee, he's entered Jerusalem, where the religious authorities consider him a threat to their comfortable status quo, and the Roman government there regards him as a troublemaker who's disturbing the peace. In just a few days after he tells this story, after he teaches with this parable, just a few days later, he will be arrested and put to death. But for now, he continues to teach and to prepare his followers for what is to come. And as one theologian says, Jesus is preparing them for what he calls the meantime, after his ascension, but before his return. We meet him as he tells the story about the three servants receiving outrageous amounts of money from their master, and this parable is actually the third of four different stories Jesus is telling in this section of Matthew about his impending return. Each of the parables he offers is met with confusion and frustrates the crowd, but in each, Jesus finds a way to illustrate what he means when he speaks of his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his return, and more importantly, how we as followers of the risen Christ are to live in preparation, awaiting this return, the meantime. As we listen to the parable, remember, remember that a parable is a story that we're meant to carry with us and continue to reflect upon. It's many layered. It doesn't give us a clear cut um, uh, a clear-cut moral, right? We have to walk with this parable, this parable, and reflect on the many, many layers of meanings. We can consider what we are doing with all that has been entrusted to us by God. That's what we're carrying with this parable of the talents, continuing to consider what we're doing with all we've been given by God. What is it 
that God desires for us to do with the abundant, extravagant gifts God has given us? And how will we use them to help others know this goodness of God? This parable does something else. It also moves us to take the next step and reflect on the way we know God and the way we know God's mercy and God's justice. The three servants are all given these large amounts of money with no apparent instruction or no intention by their master, and they're left alone with this money for a very long time. But then suddenly the master returns and wants a full accounting of the money. Two of the servants are rewarded for their investment of the money and accumulation of more wealth for their master. And the third, who feared the master, buried the treasure and it did not increase the wealth. And this servant was dealt with harshly, which has always kind of confused me a little bit. I mean, he was just taking care of that, right? He didn't want anything bad to happen to that, that money, his master's money. I've heard this interpreted a variety of ways, and I've always felt sorry for that last servant. He just was afraid. He just didn't want to lose that money. But that's the point. The problem with the third servant does not seem to be his actions. The problem is his fear. The slave sees the master as an immoral taskmaster to be feared, and so the master became what the servant feared. Now, there's theologian, a theologian named Mark Douglas, and he explains this. He says, the emotion of fear that drives the third slave creates the conditions that lead to his downfall. Fearing his master, that which he fears is realized. We're invited to let go of fear because if fear is what we imagine, then fear is what we will receive. Rather than fear, Jesus describes the grace and justice and love that is the heart of God. Just as the two faithful servants demonstrate, if grace is what we imagine, then grace is what we will receive. Hearing God's call in our lives may involve risk, as Jesus himself demonstrates by entering and teaching in Jerusalem. He could have stayed safe in the villages outside, but no comes right in to Jerusalem. All he has experienced and all that awaits him in the following days is danger, and yet he goes. These are the risks Jesus invites us to share as we are faithful to him and live as God's people together, sharing the joy that is the good news of God's love for all of us. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus gives, the, gives us the Sermon on the Mount, describing the blessings as living as God's people and his vision of God's kingdom. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. If you light a lamp and put it under a cover, it doesn't do any good. Hiding the light defeats its purpose. If you bury your talents, if you bury them in the ground, Yes, that's safe. It won't lose any value. A talent buried today is worth 
what it is when you dig it up 10 years later. But if that talent in this parable is really the message of good news, then hiding it actually will result in a huge loss. A loss of love, a loss of hope, and a loss of joy. Jesus tells us to let our light shine. Jesus tells us to proclaim the good news. If we go out and share the message we've been given, then it can multiply and spread beyond what we can imagine. We can share that good news. We can spread joy in this world. There's no point keeping that joy of the good news to ourselves, even in a time of social distancing. Now, as we head into this holiday season, I promise you I will break out some Christmas music before Thanksgiving. I'm going to break that rule. And I'm going to soak in and just enjoy all the decorations that are up right now. And maybe if people are like the poor family, those Christmas decorations may be up till Valentine's Day. We don't do too great at taking them all down <laughs> by Epiphany. But I am going to just soak up the joy, the brightness, the happiness that all those Christmas decorations offer because they are offered with the intention of spreading joy in a time of fear and stress. As we navigate the holidays trying to maintain distance and safety considerations, having to celebrate virtually with each other instead of across the table from each other, canceling plans, we are acutely aware of fear and disappointment. But I invite you to look at those decorations and remember whose birth we are celebrating and whose return we anticipate. This time, now, the meantime. And remember these lessons Jesus teaches us about how we are to live in this time. There's so much joy for us to share. Matthew's Gospel ends with the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the story we share that spreads hope and superspreads joy. We do not have to fear. We have been given so much, so much love, so much grace, and so much joy. As you share this good news, it will grow and multiply and affect the lives of others beyond what you can imagine. Let your light shine for all to see and be a super spreader of joy. Amen.
God asks us for an accounting of what we have done with the gifts that have been entrusted to us. All that we have and all that we are belongs to God. The climax of worship is an accounting of our stewardship. What are we doing with our time and our talent and treasure? treasure? It's not only what we offer to the church today, but what we offer to God every day that is under judgment. And may we always share these treasures, give these gifts, return these blessings with thankfulness. Hope UCC is profoundly grateful for the many ways this congregation, members, friends, share your, your gifts with us, with our community near and far. We thank you for your continuing support and your giving of your pledges and your offerings. And we offer this prayer of dedication to them all. There is no escape from your judgment, spirit of holiness, but neither can we escape or run away from your limitless love. We offer an accounting of our stewardship in and beyond the offering of this day. We pray that our lives are shaped for joyous participation in the work that builds the body of Christ. Use what we offer here to bring encouragement and hope to any who have lost a sense of meaning for their lives. Bless us and bless the gifts we offer in your name. We pray. Amen. Our service has ended. Our time of worship in this place and time is complete. But what never ends is the worship we take out into the world with us as we live our lives as the people of God, celebrating God's mercy and God's presence, God's spirit, pushing us out into the world to spread joy, to share joy, and to proclaim God's love. As another week unfolds, continue to look up. Dare to invest yourself for the sake of others. God will go with us to uplift our spirits. We will pass on to others the encouragement God gives. Live as children of the day, children of light. Keep awake, sober, and full of faith and love. God's saving grace is a healing force among us. God's trust in us helps us to trust others. Listen for God's commendation and affirmation well done, good and faithful servants. We will seek to be worthy of that award. May God bless our worship and our service. Go in peace to love and serve our God and spread joy to all places. Amen. See you at coffee hour. <laughs>